Hey there, it is Brittany Chavers and I'm back with a new tutorial for Jesse James Beads. Actually, I think this is gonna be a pretty epic video. I am planning on making a set, a necklace, bracelet, and pair of earrings. So come on this wild ride with me. <laughs> I'm gonna be using a lot of different things today, but the, the main focus is going to be on several, or well, these two strands from um, Jesse James Beads that are featuring Dakota Stones. So the first strand we have is Glacier Park, and uh, this one has um, Golden Obsidian, which I think is this one right here. It's got a little bit of flash in it. It has African White Jasper, or White African Jasper, and then Water Buffalo Horn. These are so cool. I just love those stripes. Um, second strand is Moonlit Stroll, and we've got some glass beads, but also Moonstone. Do you see that flash? And I love that shape. Like, I don't think I have anything that shape. It's faceted so many different ways. And then um, here's more moonstone in a um, just smooth round. Um, I'm also going to get an assist with um, these other strands. These are called Warm Jasper. I'm just grabbing the gold metal out of these because um, I'm on a mixed metal roll right now so i'm pulling these putting these off to the sides just grabbing some bead caps um, and spacers from there and then possibly some bead caps and spacers from the coral sea glass strand so those will be our secondaries and then i got this really cool um donut chain oh, isn't that just like it's just like luxurious to me i don't know so we're going to be using a lot of that we have i have two feet but um, we're probably going to use about eight inches for the necklace and then some in both the bracelet and the earrings. And then we have this Lauren's chain in antique silver, and this is really cool too. Um, I hadn't seen this before, and I just, I really love it. I really love it. So we're going to have shiny silver, shiny gold, and antique um silver and then i have an assortment of clasps to see what i'll match um, and these are all available on um, jesse james beads i think they even have like a toggle assortment available so we're also going to be using um, bead stringing wire and um, crimps and you know pliers and things like that and then we're going to be using some black fairy silk today too i don't get a, ch a lot of chances to use fairy silk so i'm just really loving that this is going to use a lot of different like textures and materials to create a really fun set. Okay, so I'm going to put my chains off to the side, my clasps off to the side, and I'm gonna start opening up bead strands. And then we're gonna um, decide what order to put everything in. I just love this strand. And I'm really only going from uh, the Moonlit Stroll, I'm really only going for the Moonstone from this strand. So those milkier white beads. Although everything's so pretty. And I will put some of the silver um, beads in our mix here. So I'm just gonna, maybe I'll keep, this is a glass bead right here. Maybe I'll keep some of those too. So I am going to I'll go with, we're gonna go with our stones first. Don't those just look so yummy? And then we'll come in with the metal. I have another one of each one of these. So I'm not worried about using um, all my beads up because I want a really nice focal on this necklace. Um, so I can um, focus on just this and then I'll, I'll pull from for the bracelet from the other two strands. So I for sure wanna have my, um, I was gonna say spicy, but striped, <laughs> striped um, buffalo beads in the necklace. Bring this over a little bit more centered. There we go. And um, you could absolutely wire wrap them to where the star was showing. And if you remember, I did a live where I did a flat leather bracelet with these beads. Um, so that'll match my necklace going forward. But um, when in the necklace they're gonna be showing is just regular stripe beads and I like that look too. Okay, I wanna get my larger, my four larger um, moonstone beads in here as well. And I think I think we're going to use this one as the middle. So we'll have an extra because 
I'm not going to use um, an even amount. We'll have an extra to put aside for our um, bracelet or earrings. And then I'm going to make sure that we get in our other moonstone. And I want my African Jasper in there. And these are large hole beads too. So you can even put leather through these. that's good enough for the moment and then I'll revisit you know once we start getting some um, metal in there I want this to be right around 8 to anywhere from 8 to 10 inches it depends on what we end up doing with the chain and I'm just like I said gonna grab some of the gold from um, the warm Jasper strand it looks like I don't really want the sparkly um, beads for this mix, but I'm gonna grab some bead caps. I really like these little, little flower stars. And then I like the spacer beads in this strand. So I'll put those aside for my next project. Okay, so now we have a really good um, base for us to grab from. And like I said, I am going to be using both silver and gold for this. So I really like these um, silver donuts. I really like these bead caps. I think. I like those around our white African Jasper. Put these around our bone beads. I think I'll work in a um, golden obsidian between our African Jasper and our uh, Moonstone so we can get a little bit more silver in there and I'll put these guys. And I'm just going to put one bead cap around our little glass bead between the, the horn and um, the glass. Now I'm going to use, I think I'm going to use gold wire for this. And I'm just going to kind of see, see what I like um, and put, I'm going to put a, um, put this on the end this on the end and then one of those and one of those so we'll see how long this is it might be a little too long and then we'll go from there
Okay, so here's our result and I just love it. It's so pretty. Um, and I really like, you know, I, I wasn't planning on doing it as metal heavy as it is, but I really like the doubling up of the spacer with the bead cap. Sometimes we um, kind of shy away from adding a little too much metal, but I, I'm really liking how this is going. And I love that it's it's going to be kind of classic because it's black and white and neutral and it's got both colors of metal in it so you can wear it pretty much with with anything i'm thinking i am going to go ahead and um, clamp this just for a moment because i am not um, ready to crimp so i'm gonna set that to the side i'm going to grab my chains and i'm gonna cut a 16 inch um, length of I have a, um, a ruler on my mat 16 inch length of the Lauren chain this is such a nice chain I haven't used this chain before and it's really pretty it's a lot going on with it too like different shapes and hammered textures it looks really cool so I am going to double this. So it looks like that. And then I want to see how long our bead strand is in relation to our chain. So it's a little shorter, which is perfect. I'm going to put it on the inside. And then we're going to find our donut chain. and I'm going to hang it just below our Lauren chain. So it's gonna be a little bit longer. So it's gonna be really pretty though, and it's gonna be, people are gonna notice this necklace. Okay, so what I want to do is make sure that I have something to um, connect this onto all four, well, it's gonna be three strands, but four strands because of the double chain and it looks like we can um, connect on yeah I can connect on to like a jump ring or um, if you had two of like a, a specific toggle you could connect on to that I'm gonna check my toggle stash and I'll be right back okay so I went through all my Jesse James bead stuff and I found this um, findings kit from the Jesse James Bead summer camp. I know you're thinking like, well, what am I going to do with that? I didn't go to summer camp if you didn't go. Well, they're still available on their website. So um, it was uh, these Tierra cast ending end findings, and this will work pretty well with our um, our uh, fairy silk, and then it'll help us, you know, bond onto the fairy silk. Now, if you want, you can just use a jump ring. You can use like a toggle clasp. I had a couple of these I thought about using. Um, you can cr uh, crimp onto this, or use a jump ring onto here, whatever kind of transition piece you want. But I really like that this is gonna pull in more of that antique um, uh, silver. So, um, I am going to go ahead and find a crimp bead. I'll use these gold beetle on crimp beads. You can use the jump ring to get it to go on to the end finding, but I'm just going to crimp right on. And then I think we'll have enough room for two smaller jump rings um, to get the chain attached to. So there we go. And then I'm going to find my crimping pliers. Make sure your, your wire isn't crossed. And we'll go ahead and put that in the largest valley of our crimp pliers and then go ahead and squish. And then we'll turn sideways. Actually, I wanna make sure that that crimp got a full crimp the first time there we go and then we'll turn sideways and squish again and then we'll squish at the end there we go and I'm just gonna slide that extra tail into some of these beads 
and then I can put a crimp cover on at the end and then I'll come down to the other end and do the exact same thing onto the other side of our necklace. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and tighten that, but not too tight to where it's a straight line. So I always call that loosey-goosey. And then we will cut our little wire as closely as possible to that bead without cutting our other wire. And then we'll do that on the other side. Okay, so we have our first part of our necklace. I, I'm just like, this is making my eyes so happy. <laughs> my eyes are loving that. Okay, so then next we're coming in with our um, antique silver. These are just from my stash. I've had them for a long time. I'm not 100% sure what's, what brand they are. But you could use gunmetal, you could use silver, you could use gold, whatever you want to use. That's the, the, the perfect thing about mixed metal. It's just wonderful. Okay, so I'm going to open up my my uh, jump rings, or well, jump ring, jump ring. Load on one piece or one end of the chain, and I I didn't cut this, but we'll see how the other end reacts to me not cutting it. And I'm just making sure it's not like twisted or anything, and it's not. And then I'm going to apply that on the outside of that bead strand. and twist it closed and do the exact same thing on the other side so there are two strands so far I just love it okay and then um, I'm going to take this guy off just because I would like to have that jump ring hopefully be our connection on to our uh, end finding you know what, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna use a little bit uh, larger jump ring. Put that through our other jump ring. And then again, we're gonna put that on the outside of everything else. Twist that closed. I didn't measure how much I want the um, gold to be, but I do want it to be longer than our silver, but not too much longer. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so we're gonna go with this guy right here. Cut this off. Hey. So, I mean, that that's a beautiful like bracelet right there. You can definitely do like a three strand, four strand bracelet, but we're using it as a necklace today. And I just love how it like kind of melds together to, your, your eye is always looking, always moving between these pieces. So I am going to find my fairy silk. And I think I have a yard here. So I'm just going to double up the yard. And I'm gonna cut it. I know um, there are people who call that sacrilegious, <laughs> but I am going to cut it in half. And then for the first half, I'm going to double it again. And take the um, folded end and kind of take my, um, my end finding. And you can use a wire here, you can use a head pin, but I'm gonna use just my pliers. And I'm gonna try and feed that into my, um, my end finding. And then you'll just want to hold it in place while you get your flat nose pliers and you'll just squeeze that. There we go. You can also glue. There we 
we go. You can also glue, that guy's not coming out of there. Um, you can glue that in there. You can do whatever you want, but crimping it is the easiest way to get it to close. All right, so now we have our, um, our crimp. And then I'm just gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. Okay, so I chose this toggle clasp set for the closure of my necklace, but I wanna let you know that there are so many ways you can finish this necklace off. You can leave it open just with your, your two ends and you can tie it each time. You could wire wrap um, like a bead cone on and then attach a jump ring and a, t um, a toggle. You could do, I mean, there are just so many ways you could wire wrap a bead on and then put on a toggle or any clasp that you like to use. You can use the magnetic clasp, but this is the way that I'm going to use, do this today. So this is what it'll look like at the end. We'll have our two pieces going through um, our toggle with a wire, a messy wire wrap. Um, now I did end up putting both um, pieces through independently on this part of the toggle because uh, it was a little, it's just a little, it's a little difficult to get them both through at the same time. However, I think even cutting on an angle, um, we might be able to get this, both of these through at the same time with this one because one's a little bit more stretched out. But if not, I'll show you how I did the other one. And, but I'm thinking this one's going to be a lot easier. So we got our first one through. And then I'm just gonna poke through with my trusty dusty crimpers. Kind of feed that through. I had to go through a bunch of malarkey for the other side, but this side was super easy, <laughs> which is great because that's the side that I'm showing you. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna make sure it's even, although it's not gonna super matter if it's not. All right, so I'm gonna put those, line those up bring this down and then I just want this to be about the same length as the other side so it's still a little bit long uh, there we go so I cut a length of 24 gauge, gauge wire you could just tie this in a knot and be good to go. Um, you could tie some more um, string around it or some uh, more fairy silk, whatever floats your boat. I'm just going to wire wrap it closed to get a little bit more metal. As you can tell, we're, we're doing as much metal on this one as we possibly can. <laughs> and I'm just going to start my wire wrap around both pieces. Get it secured, a few wraps, and then we'll messy wrap around. Here we go, and I'll just keep going until I run out of wire or I'm satisfied, either one. So we have that side, I'm gonna trim. And then I'm going to come in from the side and keep going. And if you have your um, fairy silk gapping, like there are gaps, you can see it through. I think it just adds to the charm. But there are people who just want it to be uniform, and that's totally, it's your necklace. Make it however you'd like. Um, and then that, I must have had a little bit of a snip there. So I'm going to just tuck this in. clip it a little bit more there we go there we go and I kind of smoosh this down a little bit a little tighter there we go and then I'm just gonna snip off the excess you can leave it and can like I said do whatever you'd like I'm gonna make sure that my um, strands are separate so we're not cutting the wrong the wrong um, ribbon. Okay, there we go. We have a gorgeous necklace. I'm like so excited to wear this tomorrow to the bead store. <laughs> and they're gonna say, you know, where'd you get that? Well, I made it and it's from all these lovely products at Jesse James Beads. So um, let's 
get these out of the way. I will show you, absolutely show you pictures at the end of everything. But I'm just loving like the multi, like all the facets to this, all the, the layers. Let's flip it around. There we go. It's so pretty. It's so sparkly. And then we see the flash from the moonstone, the flash um, from the golden obsidian. And it's just very glittery I love it okay so I'm gonna set that aside just for a moment we're gonna make some earrings and um, a bracelet cut part our last two strands okay we have all this metal all these beads and we still have our gold and our silver and some of our moonstone and African Jasper from over there. So I'm going to set apart two uh, of the close, closest matching, because some of them are a little bit wider than others, um, horn beads for our earrings. I think, I think these two are the closest. And then we're gonna use two in our bracelet. We're gonna use um, our moonstones. I feel like, here we go. So we have five of those, and I want to use at least two of these. There we go. We might make two bracelets. I don't know. I'm getting a little carried away, but I really love these beads together. So. Um, I want to use some of this chain in our bracelet. So it's gonna be like um, an asymmetrical bracelet. But I just love, I love these circles, these little donuts, they're so cute. And this is the clasp that I'd like to use for this to echo our um, our donut. What if we just did these beautiful, I think I'm just gonna do the five moonstones in the middle as our focal, put chain on both sides, and then close it with this clasp. And it's just gonna look really elegant. Oh my gosh, and it's gonna be like a beautiful um, boutique, gemstone bracelet. Love it. I think I'm going to use some 20 gauge wire. Actually, I might use even thinner wire now that I'm thinking about it. Okay, so I have, I think, I'm pretty sure this is 22 gauge wire, but 20 gauge, 22 gauge would work. I'm going to do a wire wrapped loop and we're not going to worry about, um, it's going to, it's going to be closed. So we're not going to worry about it being while you're wrapped on anything else because we have jump rings on this chain, okay? And then I'm just going to do a quick loop and wire wrap a couple times. And then I'm just gonna snip the, the end of my tail here. I'm gonna slide on all five of my beads. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be like my new favorite bracelet for sure. I love the flash in that moonstone. Okay, just like that. And then we're just gonna make um, another loop down at the other end. And we'll hold that and wire wrap a few loops around, just like the other end. And then we want to make sure that we end on the same side with our our um, the end of our wrap. So I'm going to cut it back here. OK, 
Okay, and here is our beautiful link. Isn't that gorgeous? And then I'm just gonna kind of shape it into a bracelet bar. This, I didn't do a great job of making my, um, my uh, uh, loops the same size, but that's okay. Shows it's handmade, right? <laughs> and then um, I'm just gonna make sure that the loops are facing where I need them to face, which is perfect like that. So that's our little bracelet bar. Um, I'm gonna attach our chain. And it, uh, to me, it doesn't really matter which one I start with. I think it's starting with the, the larger ones fine. If you want it to be a little, start off a little bit more daintily, then start off with the, the smaller donut. Here we go. Okay, so I'm just going to um, measure this on my wrist and then um, see how much more chain I need and then we'll cut it apart and put our toggle on and then we'll okay be for the toggles I did take off the tiny jump rings and I'm just substitute substituting that with a little bit larger one For the bar part of the toggle, we need to put on two jump rings because um, the toggle part has to be able to go through, um, obviously or the bar has to be able to go through the loop, but part of the back of the bracelet needs to be able to go through too. And that donut is a little too large to make it through our loop. So I'm hoping, here we go, here we go. Put this on. I love it. It's so comfortable and it's so pretty. And I could put this part on the top of my wrist, or if you wanted to go half chain, half moonstones. Um, yeah, and this is a great stacker bracelet, too. Oh, I love it. I love it. And then we're going to make some earrings. Okay, for the earrings, we're going to need one of the smaller donuts without the jump rings, these um, five beads, and an ear wire, and then a length of um, 24 gauge wire. I'm using silver, but it's really to get that mixed metal, metal back into the earring. So I'm going to make my own head pin by stringing on one of these crystal rondelles that were on the strand. And I'm gonna line up my two wires. I'm not going to twist them. I know you've seen me do that recently, but I'm not going to twist them. I am just going to line up my wires and then slip on the rest of my beads. I'm gonna put on the, the horn bead, our silver spacer, our white African jasper, our little Deezy. Oh, actually I lied, I need another moonstone. And then we have we have our stack here, and I am going to take my um, nylon jaw pliers and make sure everything's really snug on here, all the way down to our little crystal bead at the bottom. Okay, that's a good way to make sure you can pull on your wire without damaging it. So you could straighten it back out. And then look, our little bead down here is our little head pin. Isn't that fun? We have a really pretty stack of beads going on here. So I am going to make a wire loop at the top. I'm just gonna hold my pliers like that, bend back, then reposition my pliers, bend forward, reposition my pliers. So we have a, a loop starting and drag to the back, just like that. So there's our loop. I am not going to close it. I'm going to uh, thread both wires onto one end of my donut. And we're gonna click that into place. And then we're gonna go to town, wire wrapping um, around the top of these beads. So it's, it's sometimes when we have um, a component in the way, it's a little tricky wire wrapping around, so just take your time. That's what I always say, just take your time. You want it to turn out well, 
not have to do it again. Just get guide that wire where you'd like it to go and you can, you know, stop using your pliers. You could start using your pliers. I kind of just go back and forth with whatever is really comfortable for me. And then I'm just going to make sure that I end this in a spot that seems natural. Okay, just like that. And then I want to make sure here we go. So this would be the back. I'm just going to straighten my beads because that, that 24 gauge is a little malleable. And do I like how it looks? Yep. Love how it looks in the front. I'm just going to snip this in the back. Honestly, like after I made the first earring, I was like, oh, I wish I could wear earrings because <laughs> these are so fun. Uh, okay. And then I am just going to open my loop on my ear wire. You could use any type of ear wire you like. Um, Sarah always tells me that um, kidney's her favorite. You can use, um, oh gosh, now I'm having a, a moment where I don't remember words. <laughs> um, lever back, that's the one. You can use a clip on, whatever works for you, a post. So here is our little artisan earring. I love these earrings so much. I actually really, really love this entire set. This entire set just kind of floats my boat so much. And they just look, they look arty, they look expensive, and you have some really nice gemstones hanging out. So I hope you really enjoyed um, these Jesse James beads featuring Dakota stones uh, and these lovely chains that we have going on. So this bracelet is, I'm going to have to make um, a few bracelets like this because so I can have some stacks. And here is our gorgeous necklace featuring moonstone, African jasper, obsidian, and um, bone. And I'm just blown away by how beautiful these beads look together. So thank you so much for watching. And I hope you enjoyed our tutorial today. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.